Hi, it's Dave from Narrowboat Changing Pace. Just a quick introduction to the slideshow you're about to see, which is the fit out. We did a, a vlog, one of our first vlogs, zero one, which was a slideshow of the build of the Narrowboat. Let's get straight into it. Hope you enjoy. We started the project by putting a tonne and a half of ready mix concrete inside the boat as ballast. I used a damp proof coarse liner to protect the whole of the boat from the concrete. We had a problem immediately when we tried to start the engine. The intake pipe from the diesel tank was blocked so we had to do a bit of a retrofit on that. The metal doors of the boat were a temporary addition for security while we built the boat. I had these fabricated at work and attached them to the boat with stainless steel piano hinge with nylock nuts to stop them undoing with the vibration of the boat. I also made two stainless steel sliding hatches. I didn't want uh, a wooden hatch. So I had two mile steel hatches made. We also made a stainless steel protective cover for the control panel on the left hand side. The metal doors presented a problem with how I was going to lock them. I experimented with several different options before settling on the slide bolts that are shown here. These are, these are temporary till I, I got further along on the fit out of the boat but they did allow us to lock the boat and keep it secure. The fit out started in earnest with me battening the whole boat out. I used tantalised timber for this job. I made some brackets so that the standoff from the gunnel was uniform. This allowed me to get everything straight and, and lined up, ready for the boarding to go on. The insulation I used was rock wool, thicker rock wool below the gunnels, 100mm and 50mm above the gunnels. This turned out to be a big mistake, but at the time we didn't know that. Uh, the, the rock wool was held in place by using sticky pins that you stick to the side of the boat, impale the rock wool over them and then there's a little washer that you can see that slides over and holds the rock wool to the side of the boat. This is supposedly to get rid of any air gaps. I also put a damp proof coarse membrane in as a vapour barrier before I put the boards on. Before I, I boarded, I also run 90% of the electric cables. I used conduit for the long runs for the horn and tunnel light at the front and the water pump, which was also fitted at the front. And then broke out of the conduit for the various other applications, the lights, the fridge and this, that other, which I routed through the battening. Uh, so it were all in place when I started the actual fitting out of the, the boat itself. I colour coded all the wires with, with tape. You can see red and, red and blue and red and brown, red and green. So I could identify each set of wiring at the fuse box. I started panelling the roof first. And this was because I had to bend the boards to the shape of the roof. It was just easier to, to get them in place first. It enabled me to see better doing the rest of the boat. So the ceiling was put up and the lights were put in place. We used down lighters with LED bulbs which I cut into the boards and then threaded the cables through and connected the lights up in each room as we went along. 
just bought from Bedazzled. And when I eventually finished the roof off, I then started boarding the bottom of the boat below the gunnels. These boards were bought from Magnum Motorhomes in Grimsby. They are 8mm marine ply with a white laminate fascia on them. And we bought them in bulk and got them at a very good price. I then started boarding the top of the boat out. The boarding above the gunnels and around the windows I made a jig at work so I could cut the window openings with the router so they were all exactly the same size and the right fit for the windows. It saved a lot of time in messing about and once the boat was boarded out with the with the white boards it, it gave us quite a spacious look to the boat. The engineered wood floorboards went down there. I put them down as a floating floor on a foam membrane and then started with the kitchen. We had a colour to the boat through the kitchen with the burgundy and black cupboards which was bought from Wicks. The opening day of Wicks at Drake House in Sheffield, we got a very good deal. We were one of their first customers. We alternated between low and high level units. The high level unit housed an LPG built-in oven and the burgundy high level units housed the fridge and washing machine below and the storage above. We then splashed out on a quartz-like sparkle worktop bought from Blythe Marble with the whole water jet cut in for the sink and inset three burner hob. This weighs quite a bit and to say it's quartz with the cutouts in it, it was quite fragile. It took three blocks to carry this in very gingerly. They didn't fit it, I fitted it myself but they delivered it and, and brought it into the boat for us. Above the kitchen sink we went for a aluminium Venetian blind just to keep in, in with the keeping of the chrome fittings. We decided to go for a, quite a big shower with purpose built pod bought from a company in Newark that specializes in this sort of thing. All the piping is behind the pod and the pod fits into the shape of the side of the boat. So it utilizes as much space as possible. We had curved doors brought from the same company so I didn't have to cut the doors down. Uh, they were bang on the right size for the height of the boat. We also added some LED lights into the pod, top and bottom, uh, red at the top and white halfway down. The toilet was built diagonally opposite the shower, so I built a little box to house the cassettes. It opened up into the corridor which gave us the space to get the cassettes in and out. It's a Thetford C 250 I think which we've since replaced with the same toilet but with a ceramic bowl. It has a electric flush which uses water straight from the tank. Purchased a little vanity unit for the bathroom which is directly opposite the toilet and quite a small sink with the cupboard underneath. Chrome radiators, one in the bedroom one in the saloon and again just to add a bit of contrast from the white boarding brings a bit of colour and, and style to the boat. We piped this up to a, a central heating boiler, an owl central heating boiler which is also connected to the chlorifier tank so we can eat the hot water as well from the central heating boiler. An afterthought was a, a wood burner or multi-fuel burner. 
We had some purpose-built steps made to get him from the cruiser stern, which meant that the, there wasn't a lot of room for the wood burner to go, so I adapted the right-hand side of the steps so I can move them over to the right hand side to give us a little bit more room for the wood burner I made us a metal stand which I tiled which allowed us to have a bit of space under the log burner as a wood store and give us a bit more room away from the, the side of the boat and the steps for safety reasons then an expensive trip to Crick Boatshow you can see the swatches here we decided to have two drop down bed settees made one with the floral design one with the stripe design we also had some purpose built uh, curtains made from the same company with double rails eyes were sewn into the curtains and the rail top and bottom holds them to the shape of the boat so it works quite well, we we're really happy with them. Prick Boat Show was great, very expensive, but a great experience. And we got to see Toyer at the eve in the evening as well, so that was a bonus. The bedroom furniture I made from IKEA uh, units, adapted them as you do everything when you're building a boat. Uh, the wardrobe, I built some shelves underneath it. Uh, the cupboards at the end were just standard cupboards built to the shape of the side of the boat which gave us quite a bit of storage but as time went on we realised we hadn't got enough storage so we've since replaced these with uh, other some kids wardrobes that we also got from IKEA which gave us a little bit more storage, a little bit more space. The underneath of the front of the boat, I boarded out. The, the water tank is directly in front of you. Uh, stainless steel built into the bow of the boat. I boarded the rest of it out, the chlorifiers on the right hand side as you can see which houses the, the pump and the expansion tank and everything for the plumbing. Uh, and this is quite good storage space. The lights that you can see are LEDs, we bought those from Bedazzled and on various blogs you'll see on our website now the boat changing pace. Uh, I'll talk about I talk about these things as well in greater detail. The gap between the side panels and the roof panels, we used some stainless steel angle that I made at work. Although this looked great in the winter, it suffered badly with condensation and drips, so we've since replaced that. But as with everything on a boat, you live and learn. In 2016, we had a massive problem with our old PMC engine. We'd had problems with the cylinder head a couple of times and it eventually gave up the ghost on the river with them near Lincoln. It, it blew up and it weren't the first time. So we decided to bite the bullet and have a brand new Barrow Shire 45 horsepower engine fitted. They sorted the engine bay out and did some wiring for us and fitted the engine. Uh, they also blacked the boat while the boat was out of the water, put new anodes on. So in the four or five years the boat had been in the water, uh, the, the state of the hull was, was quite good, the two pike lacking that we'd had on when we first put the boat in the water had held up uh, and they just blacked over the top of it. Uh, in 2018 I stripped the boat out again completely to have spray foam insulation done. The, the rock wall wasn't performing as we'd liked and we were getting quite a lot of in, uh, 
condensation inside the boat. So we had the boat spray foamed and then I had the job of putting the boat back together. Uh, we altered uh, one or two little bits but all the boarding just dropped back in exactly where it went. Well that's it for the slideshow for the fit out of Narrowboat Changing Pace. Hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. If you've got any questions for me, drop them in the comments below. I'll answer anything I can do. If you like what you've seen, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And hit the little notification bell for future videos. You can also check out our website, changingpace.co.uk. There's loads of stuff on there. Links to his vlogs and other stuff. But for now, hope to see some of you out on the cut and the rest of you, I hope you enjoy joining us on our cruises and adventures of 2021. Bye.